All right, today I will go over properties of kites. So before I start with the properties, let me begin by drawing a kite. So my advice for drawing a kite is first let's draw a kite. Let's draw a horizontal line. Okay, <clears throat> and on that horizontal line, let's go ahead and identify the midpoint, because along this midpoint, and I'm doing mine on a graph so I can count my midpoint, here's my midpoint, along that midpoint, I will draw a vertical line, and I want to make sure that one side of that vertical line is longer than the other, so I'll make mine longer going down. So horizontal line and the vertical line, and then I will connect these four sides on the outside. Uh oh, my ink is bleeding. Oh well. Pardon this interruption, teachers and students. Teachers, at this time, we are under shelter in place due to weather. Again, teachers, we are in shelter in place due to weather. Please take the necessary precautions and follow the procedures on your grade form. And what you just heard is one of our safety drills. But thankfully, I'm not in class right now. So, continuing on. There's my kite. So, because we passed through a midpoint, this vertical line passed through the midpoint. That means this side is congruent over here. Can zoom in now. We have a vertical line with a horizontal line. A vertical line with a horizontal line forms a right angle. Looking at my top two triangles, these two triangles are congruent by side, angle side. Because these two triangles are congruent, that means their corresponding hypotenuse are also congruent. Down here, same thing happens, these two are congruent. And notice we have symmetry in this kite. You can see that the left side matches the right side, which means our angles on the left, this angle, congruent over here. Same thing, this angle, congruent over here. This entire angle is congruent with this entire angle. Alright, and last few bits, I'll do one, this angle, congruent over here, and finally this angle is congruent over here. So these are all properties of a kite. Now let me proceed with the minimum definition of a kite. A kite amounts to a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. And no opposite sides congruent. Okay, there's the formal definition of a kite. What this means is if I do a sketch of a kite over here to the side, and I'll just sketch it so I won't measure. I have two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. Adjacent means if I pick this side, 
Then the side adjacent next to it is congruent. This one or that one. <coughs> and you have two different pairs. So I have a top pair that's congruent. And then I have a bottom pair that's congruent. And no opposite sides congruent means this side right here. Let me grab it. Sorry about that. This side right here cannot be congruent with this side. Because if these two opposite sides are congruent, that will make these two opposite sides congruent as well. And that makes it a rhombus, not a kite anymore. Okay. So there are properties of a kite. So let me go ahead and do some sample problems here. Using those properties. One thing I'd like to mention, going back to my drawing, once you have a quadrilateral with these four symbols, two sides congruent, another two sides congruent, that means all of these symbols in here are automatically in here as well. Even if I don't physically draw out these symbols or mention that we have congruent things inside here, because of these four symbols making this a kite, that means everything in here goes in here. That's what it means for, a, for the minimum definition of a kite. All right, going to my example now. Number one. Number one. We're trying to find B and D. I know, we know, angle B and angle D have to be congruent. Because it's telling you each quadrilateral is a kite. So I have symmetry going from down here to up here. Symmetry. And we know from polygons that the sum of my interior angles can be expressed by the formula. 180 times n minus 2. For four sides, that means my interior sum, interior angle sum, is 360. So all four angles add up to 360. We are missing two angles. Here we go. So I can do 85 plus 43. Thank you again for teachers and students. That was a shelter-in-place weather drill. We appreciate our teachers and students abiding by our procedures and meeting expectations. <laughs> we were able to clear the building in less than four minutes. Great job, campus. All right. So these two angles add up to 128. I know all four are supposed to add up to 360, so I can do 360 minus 128. To get 232. That means I have 232 degrees left to split between these two congruent angles. So 232 divided by 2 gets us 116. Okay. Next, I want to do something like number five. Number five looks like a lot, but it's not, because half of these angles are congruent to the other half. So, properties of kites. My kite can fold this way. These, the top and the bottom are symmetric. That means 65 up here is congruent with angle four. 52 over here is congruent with angle 7. And angle 3, the diagonals make a 90 degree angle. Let me write that in actually. Now let's take a look at numbers 1 and 2. Angle 1, I want to look at this triangle right here. Okay. That triangle. For that triangle, we know that angles of a triangle add up to 180. And we also know that this is 90 degrees as well. So we can have 65 plus 90 equals 180. Or plus 65 plus 90 first. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Equals 155. Then we can do 180 minus 155. 
to get us 25 degrees. So angle 1 is 25 degrees, which is congruent with angle 2. Angle 2 is 25 degrees as well. Now let's do the same for 5 and 6. I'll move down here. We have 52 plus 90, which gets me 142. Subtract from 180, 180 minus 142 gets us 38 degrees, which makes angle 6, 38 degrees, and 6 and 5 are congruent, so 5 is 38 as well. There you have it. Alright, a few more examples. Number 7. We still keep using Pythagorean theorem here. Wx is 14. We know Wr is 8. We're trying to find Rz. Heights tell me if this is 14, this is 14. Which now lets me look at this triangle right here. In that right triangle, we have 8 squared plus b squared equals 14 squared. 64 plus b squared equals 196. Subtracting 64 both sides, b squared equals 132, and at the end of Pythagorean theorem, we square root to get b equals 11.49, which means rz right here is 11.49. Okay, number 11 I'll just set up and then I'll do 13 and that's where I'll stop for this video. Number 11, we know that in the kite, this angle and that angle, we have left-right symmetry. Those two are congruent. So here we go. 13x minus 32 congruent means they are equal to each other. 7x plus 22. There's your setup. Over here, number 12, set up the same way. These two angles are congruent. So we have 5x plus 23 equals 8x minus 31. How about 13? So hint for 13 is my interior sum equals 360. Also, I pointed out congruent angles over here, congruent angles over here. Over here, 109, this side is congruent right there, which means B is also 109. And all four angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360. So here we go, 5x plus 14, plus 109, plus 3x plus 8, plus 109, equals 360. Combining like terms, we get, let's see, 8x plus 240 equals 360. Combining like terms, subtract 240 from both sides. We have 8x equals 120, and last step, divide by 8 to get x equals 15. So there you have properties of heights. Right here.